Now, this hour of the show, I want to introduce to you, for those of you who are following, uh, you're, you know, maybe you've already gotten your ballot, early voting is already off and underway. If you live in Congressional District 9, please listen up. If you know anybody who does, please listen up, because, you know, we've got a, a congresswoman there who came out of the uh, Arizona legislature, Kirst, Kristen Cinema, who got elected two years ago because uh, of a libertarian candidate who sucked just enough votes away from conservative Republican Vernon Parker, and he sucked just enough votes. We told it, He told the libertarians to stay home, and they did. And so she got in. This woman got in against all odds, and immediately she ran for the tall grass, and she's been hiding insofar as I can see. Now she's out again, and she's been running some very interesting campaign spots. Uh, Kristen said, she got to go. So, ladies and gentlemen, who replaces her? In the studios with me is former lieutenant. Do it, do I, when I, if I talk about a retired uh, military officer, do you say former lieutenant colonel or do you say lieutenant colonel retired or what do you, what do you, how do you do it? What's the right way? Retired lieutenant colonel. That means the individual served 20 years or more active duty, and ah. it's great to be here. Thank you, Barry. From the United States Air Force, by the way. Yes. And you were you were a pilot in yes. the Air Force. and all. This is Wendy Rogers, ladies and gentlemen. This is the person who should get elected in Congressional District 9 and clean that thing up. And get this do nothing Congresswoman <clears throat> Kristen Cinema out. I, I, I'm just wondering. Two years ago, were, were you were you surprised that she got it? It was a very close race. It was a close race. Well, we had seven Republicans in the primary because it's the brand. It was the brand new seat. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you recall, I came in a very close second uh, by 700 votes behind Vernon Parker, and of course uh, got our team out the next day to help him uh, win this seat. Uh, Democrats, of course, only had three in that primary, and Kirsten Sinema won, and then, of course, went on to win the general election. And and after that, she promptly disappeared. <clears throat> I don't know where she is. I know she comes out every once in a while, and she did a <clears> – <throat> she first did a campaign commercial spotlighting some poor guy in the military <clears> – <throat> excuse me, I'm getting choked up here – uh, spotlighting some guy came out of the military. I think he'd been in Afghanistan, if I'm not mistaken. He came back suffering with the very real post-traumatic stress syndrome. She was talking about how terrible the Veterans Administration is. We know it's riddled with problems. And she was uh, trying to tell her audience that she was taking the lead in this VA thing. And don't even look, forget John McCain over here. He's done nothing. Uh, but she was taking the lead in this VA thing. And she was uh, talking about how she's going to get in there and clean it up. And then the news came out that this guy was not a patient of the Veterans Administration. He had been under a private physician's care for five years. And sadly, he took his own life. But the VA had nothing to do with it. So quick as a flash, we had to change our commercials. And now we're doing commercials that basically say it doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat, nobody has the answer, so you might as well put me back in there. Only the problem is it does matter because she's an Obamacare person. She's, you know, 100% on the president's policies and, and all of that. But now, now let, me, let me ask you about your commercial. What happened with your commercial over the last week? Our commercial is a very aggressive uh, rundown of what her votes have been here in terms of not supporting national security. Kirsten Cinema's voting record shows that she wants Guantanamo Bay detainees to be sent home. and uh, She put, wants to close it up and send them back? Right, and put them back in the fight, essentially. And also, uh, even more troubling, to try uh, terrorists on U.S. soil and treat them as criminals rather than the combatants that they are. Did, did that actually come up to a vote? Is she on the record with yes. a vote? or it actually was, Yes, oh, okay. and in my ad, we have those two citations. From roll call. Well, everybody who who knows anything about this knows that we put them down there so we could deal with them. Uh, you know, first of all, don't bring them on the U.S. homeland for a lot of different reasons. We've already seen what happens when you try a terrorist in a U.S. courtroom. They intimidate uh, the juries. They intimidate the audience in the courtroom. Uh, at any moment, you think they've got, and they probably do, a uh, henchman who are, you know, just glaring at people. They don't say anything, but they make the juries feel... Uh, you know, uh, ill at ease. I don't know if you can get a fair trial out of this. This is what she voted to do, to bring them in here and try them. And that's correct. And people need to understand that terrorism is theater. And theater now that 
can go viral in an instant with social media. So to try a terrorist on U.S. soil gives the terrorist, the combatant, everything he wants. You know, he you, has a stage that you, way. You used, in your ad, you used a still picture of one of these ISIS guys who was going to be head, well, I think it was the American, and her people went nuts. How could you do that? And I thought to myself, well, this is reality. I mean, this is really what happened. And, you know, this is a, a very real threat because ISIS is now telling Islamic people anywhere in America, just isolate an American anywhere on the street. Now we've got a real threat that they're going to go break into a daycare center or a school and behead a child, somewhat, you know, a lone wolf uh, terrorist. So they were going nuts about your ad when they had, and they said, oh, it's terrible that you would exploit this. Meanwhile, they exploited a dead veteran who died from PTSD. I mean, there seems to be no end to what these people will do. Well, it touched a nerve. And this is what Rush Limbaugh emphasized yesterday. This touched a nerve. My ad uh, has been the shot that has uh, rung around the world now from here to Singapore uh, because (laughs) we're on Yahoo in Singapore. (laughs) Uh, because they can't argue against it. They can't argue the left cannot answer the mail on the lack of national security that has been woefully uh, apparent now. And Kirsten Sinema has been the cheerleader for President Obama in this aspect. And so it scares them to death that someone is running against Kirsten Sinema, who's not only a veteran, who's a fifth-generation career military veteran, who's a mother, who's a grandmother, who started out herself, I did, as a social worker in mental health in the military, who meets a payroll and who flew airplanes and, oh, by the way, is a woman. She just cannot assail those credentials. Mm, so so much for the, uh, for the war on women. Right. Uh, this is another thing. She was big on that for a while. I, I got to take that back. She hasn't been big on anything. As I said, you know, she sort of disappeared. Every time she would talk, it was just kind of spouting off the, you know, the Democrat talking points of the day. So they were doing that war on women thing, except that didn't go well. So now, the you know, Democrats running all over the country for the Senate, especially the, the Senate, I think, I think it's going to go Republican. I know we're going to keep the House. But we need to keep it by a bigger margin because, I mean, you know what you're up against. If you win this election. When I win. When you win this election, you're going to get up there. And Obama's already stated he's with the stroke of a pen. There's going to be amnesty. There's there's going to be some kind of draconian uh, uh, global warming laws that are going to be passed to uh, raise the cost of living for all of us. The war on coal is going to be uh, worse than ever. And it's going to be up to the House uh, to block this stuff. I mean, the the, the word is neutralizing. Yes. uh, I just uh, had a phone conversation with Ambassador John Bolton last week, and he said, Wendy Rogers, I know everybody's concentrating on the Republicans winning the Senate, but he said, I, for one, am concentrating my donations and my wherewithal on increasing the number of House seats because you and the House of Representatives will ultimately make the difference because the more uh, conservative Republicans we have who understand what national security is and how necessary it is, that is going to be the bulwark against uh, the president. Yeah, that's and this, this is so important. It's two years to go. He can do a lot of damage oh, I know. in two years, and the only hope, as I see it, to, to stymie this, the only hope is a strong Senate and a strong House to you know, put up the roadblocks and at least slow it down until we can get to the two, uh, 2016 election. Anyway, hold on for just a second. I pause here. And this is Wendy Rogers in uh, in Congressional District Nine. If you're in Nine, pay careful attention. If you're not in Nine, uh, send her some money because just WendyRogers.org is yeah. where everyone can go. It's an it's an expensive thing to uh, to mount one of these campaigns. Hang on a second. It's KFYI. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as bad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Get your Fox News fix at the top and bottom of the hour from News Talk 550 KFYI. Everybody has to ask themselves, I think the election, what, in 25 days, midterm elections, everybody's got to ask themselves, 
Uh, what are we going to do in order to stymie this this Barack Obama thing? Because there's going to be some really horrible things that get signed by the president's pen. Uh, these executive actions, it, you know, in I hear people all the time saying, "Don't worry, the courts can reverse it." There's not never been an executive action reversed by the courts. They, I don't even know if you know the House and the Senate have really been. I think we stopped one, maybe two, in the history of the United States. But, ladies and gentlemen, if we get uh, a, a Republican Senate and we get a real good majority, even more so in the House of Representatives, we're going to make some history over the next uh, over the next two years. Um, you know, look, we've got we've got a campaign going on right now against ISIS, wherever they are. So, and I'm not really sure what kind of campaign uh, we have, uh, because now I'm hearing that we are bombing them only to degrade them, um, not to kill them and not to stop their advance. So now you're you're an Air Force veteran of more than two decades. You told me that back, you were flying back under uh, President Bush and back under President. You were flying under H.W. Bush, right, and under President uh, Clinton. And you said that you could see and other people around you in the Air Force could feel a difference based on the commander in chief. Absolutely. I flew uh, for a number of years under President Clinton and George H.W. Bush. In the latter part of my career, I was under uh, President Clinton. And as an example, my last mission was into Kiev, Ukraine, in a C-21 Learjet. And we had asked for diplomatic clearance uh, to get in and out of Kiev, I think, three weeks prior uh, to my mission, which was in the spring of 96. We went out to go fly back to Ramstein Air Base from Kiev. It was uh, early spring, and there was a lot of frost on our wings. We called for a de-icing truck, never sent it, never sent it. They toyed with us. It was a clear uh, affront to who we were. We finally had to get our plastic credit cards out of our wallet, <laughs> climb up on the wing, and, you scrape scrape the wing. and scrape the wings. And you're a pilot, you understand. You, you're the captain of the plane, you're out there scraping the wings? I made the passengers do it, too. <laughs> so we scraped the frost off the wings to make sure we were airworthy. And then as we were taxiing, getting ready uh, to taxi out, engines started, the de-icing truck showed up. Showed up, yeah. Okay. Well, this, there you go. I, I got home, and we talked about it, and they said that was a clear, diplomatic little slap in the face. A little snub right. going on. Well, I mean, now it's happening to, you know, Obama. It's, it's, it's open between everything that Putin is doing. I mean, shot down a jet, for God's sake, uh, and a passenger jet. Well, you know, we do nothing, and Obama's over there saying, you know, if, if Bashir Assad crosses this red line and uses weapons of mass destruction, oh, my God, we're going to do something. And I, I'm still waiting. We're still waiting now. And so we got this thing going on. So let's let's just flash back and play what if you had been in the military and, you know, you see this uh, where the commander in chief is merely talking about degrading the enemy. Have you ever heard of anything like that as a as an officer in the military? Anybody said what we got to do is go out and degrade them and teach them a lesson. That's it's silliness. And what it does is it telegraphs to our enemies a lack of political will. It shows to our enemies when we say we don't want to have boots on the ground, we should not be telling people what we don't want to do. We should be telling the enemy what we will do. And to that extent, we should not be revealing what our plans are, uh, our plans for exiting a country, our plans for uh, how we're going to accomplish the mission. You do not tell the enemy what you're going to do. You do not put your forces on a timeline so that they can the enemy can sit and wait it out this is the kind of demoralizing influence that our commander-in-chief has had on the military and it's frankly uh, very very troubling because lives are lost when the commander-in-chief is not resolute when his uh, cheerleaders are not when someone like kirsten cinema says it's okay uh, for our commander-in-chief to lead this way. This isn't leadership. This is apologetic. And, and just to make sure that, that there's no ambiguity here, it does matter which party you're a member of with regard to this election to the House of Representatives, right? I mean, she's out there basically saying, Absolutely. Well, it doesn't matter, you know, it's, it's you uh, know, we're not the, right, the they're not that, right. That and, really touches the nerve with those of us in the military. Our politicians 
who use the military are politicians who are never really a friend of veterans of the active duty military. But then when they're running for office, they try to uh, look as though they are. And they trot out props. And they trot out people who make them look as though they are a friend of the military. When you look at the record of a politician, it's clear where she has stood. She has never been a friend to us in the yeah. military. Well, I mean, you know, she she wanted to close Luke Air Force Base for one thing that was a number of years ago. And I, I listen, people throw this around, and I've had people say you really shouldn't say that on the air because, you know, we don't know for sure. But the, all these stories floating, and you can't get her to deny it. Was she or was she not a communist at some point in time? I don't know. I'm not even asking you to get into that. These stories are just floating around all the time, and you can't. I mean, if I asked you if you're a communist, step up and say no. I think I can't uh, get an answer from A leopard her. never changes her spots. Yeah, you have to look at somebody and how she or I have conducted my life throughout my growing up years, and my professional life. Yeah. If you want to know how a politician is going to vote and defend or not defend her country, look at the record. Look at what the record of service has been. And that will tell the tale. You got it. All right, now, listen, uh, those who want to go to your website, because it costs money to run this campaign, even if you're not in District 9, and, you know, you don't have, the money's tight, Christmas is coming and all that, send over five bucks or something and uh, and help out. This is a very important congressional race, not just to Arizona, but to the entire country. So how do they find uh, your website? Wendy, like the hamburgers, Rogers, like Roy Rogers, wendyrogers.org. And let me emphasize, this is now one of the top ten races in the United States. The polls show us surging. This is a race we are now winning. Why? Because soccer moms have become security moms. <laughs> and true. it's it's a suburban district it's true. Yes. where a brush fire effect is occurring because it's a densely uh, populated district. All right. I, I got to stop here because I'm already over time, but I want you to come back on before the election and come back in and give us an update and tell us how it's going. And don't stop running the commercial. Because if they're screaming uh, and yelling at you and cursing you, it hurts. It hurts them. So don't stop running the commercial. We're doing everything right, and thank you to everybody. Yes, each $1,000 donation gets the ad up one more time. All right, there it is. Wendy Rogers, ladies and gentlemen. Come back again. Lieutenant Colonel Wendy Rogers, come back again. It's KFYI.